It's not what you normally catch in a lake. The latest on how this car ended up in Lake Chihol. If we can relate to what Brandon went through before he passed away. What effort this woman is organizing to honor a South Georgia boy buried in an unmarked grave and how you can help. How veterinarians in one community are working together to make it easy for everyone to get their pets vaccinated against rabies. We were trying to think of ways that we could help. We'll show you the way Georgia Southern students did find to honor nursing students killed in a crash. Now in high definition, live, local, late breaking, this is WALB News 10 at 11. We begin tonight with an update to news we broke during our 6 o'clock news. Tonight, Darty County police were able to lift some fingerprints off this stolen car found submerged late this afternoon in Lake Chihaw. They're waiting to see if they get a hit on those prints, and they're waiting to hear back from the detective handling the investigation in Savannah where this car was stolen. Right now, it's a mystery who dumped the car in the lake and when. You can help provide a proper grave site for a little Albany boy buried in an unmarked grave. Sunday was the first anniversary of 10-year-old Brandon Price's death. Despite evidence of abuse or neglect, no one has been charged. A lot of people reached out wanting to honor Brandon after our investigation into his death. One good Samaritan is buying a headstone. Bridget and Travis Mack are working with her and others to provide a granite slab and to raise awareness about child abuse. There are a lot of questions that still remain when it comes to Brandon's case. If we can come together as a community to make a difference, to save a life, and to help keep a family together, we're willing to do whatever it takes. They're planning a community service to honor Brandon once the new gravesite is complete, and they may start a fund to help other children in his name. Find out how you can donate at WAOB.com. A bill streamlining Georgia's child welfare system was signed into law by Governor Nathan Deal today. It aims to improve communication among child welfare groups, state agencies, and foster parents. It gives foster parents access to medical and educational records and support sharing data to give caseworkers a better picture of a child's interaction with the state. Day. New details tonight on the unsolved murder of an elderly couple in Putnam County a year ago. The sheriff told WSB TV that investigators now have a person of interest in the murders of Russell and Shirley Dermond. His beheaded body was found in the garage of the couple's home in a gated lakefront community. Her body was found in Lake Oconee about two weeks later. The sheriff says he does not have a motive or enough evidence to make an arrest. An update tonight on the Metro Atlanta sheriff who shot and critically injured a woman Sunday. Clayton County Sheriff Victor Hill says Guinevere McCord is a dear friend and he is now focused on her family. He shot her in the abdomen while the two were alone inside this model home in Gwinnett County. Hill called 911 and said the shooting was an accident, but he is not talking to investigators. New video tonight of a fire that injured four workers this afternoon at Hazelhurst Wood Pellets. Two of them were flown to the burn center in Augusta. Two others were treated at a local hospital and released. Numerous agencies, including firefighters from Coffee County, responded to that fire in Jeff Davis County. Downtown Albany business owners are excited a new hotel could be built downtown. The same developers who built the Hilton Garden Inn are close to finalizing a deal to build a Hilton Home 2 next door. They want the city to encourage other downtown development because more businesses and amenities will attract more hotel customers. The folks at Riverfront Entertainment District say it all sounds great. Uh, Any time that we can get other people that can see the potential and buy into the downtown marketing and what we're trying to do to perpetuate a good place for family, for uh, industry, for commerce of all sorts, I think it would be a great idea to extend the possibilities of what downtown is offering to the community. If everything comes together, that hotel could open in three years. Also new at 11, this long, empty downtown Albany building could soon house a new program to help young people succeed. The founder of Seed of Knowledge hopes to start renovating the old Owen Sporting Goods location next week. Actually, right now we're getting ready to um, sign a contract for the building next week. And uh, it's exciting because we know we're going to be able to do a lot of work out of here. We're going to be able to cater to a lot of kids in this community. Ricky Walker hopes to start classes in June there to focus on conflict resolution, morals and ethics, social skills, even public speaking. He says getting parents involved in the program will set it apart.
Tonight, America's leaders revealed an initial strategic plan to revitalize their downtown. UGA's Carl Vinson Institute helped develop the plan after six months of study and input from the community. They found people want more businesses, housing, and entertainment downtown. Community volunteers and civic groups are already working to put the plan in place. What's unique about this is usually you get a plan and then you have to wait for action. Again, what I think is great is that in a six-month planning process, we have 21 short-term uh, program items that are in process right now. The city is working to get federal grant money for road projects downtown. Tuesday wrapped up as a fair weather day. We had a lot of fair weather clouds across the area. Also, seasonably warm temperatures as readings topped out in the low to mid 80s. Average highs 84. We hit 83. Albany, Cordill, and Fitzgerald. 81 was a high. Motrie and Thomasville, Valdosta had a high of 82. Law of Blakely, Bainbridge, your high was 86. Of course, we had all the clouds around throughout the afternoon into early evening. They have been slowly eroding across most of the area. Exceptions east of I 75. Thicker cloud deck lined up along the Georgia coast. Also continuing to see a few isolated showers. They are trying to creep further inland, but having a tough time. Looks like drier air winning out across the state. As we move into the overnight, we'll have a few clouds in the area, but otherwise by sunrise, it'll be mostly clear and we start out seasonably mild with our morning lows, upper 50s to low 60s. Continuing on into our hump day, only some minor changes and looks like that will be the trend for the rest of this week. But will it change over the weekend? details in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Yolanda. A student was taken into custody after investigators say he fired a gun in a Georgia school. They say the gun accidentally discharged inside a boy's bathroom at Conyers Middle School this afternoon. No one was hurt. Police locked down the school and conducted a sweep with canine officers before declaring an all clear. Police are once again urging folks to lock up their guns. A gun used to kill a New York police officer was stolen from a pawn shop in Perry. A shop owner in Albany says she locks up all her guns in a safe every night. Police say there are three things to keep in mind if you have a gun. One, document it. When you buy a gun, document the make, the model, and the serial number. Two, secure it. You have to lock it up. Lastly, is report it. If it does happen to get stolen, we need to know. Yes, Detective Harvey says many stolen weapons are later used in crimes. Sure. A Georgia Southwestern State University professor is raising money to help people from his hometown in Nepal struggling to recover from last week's devastating earthquake. WAOB News 10 Shannon Wiggins is here to tell us how. That magnitude 7.8 earthquake rattled Nepal 10 days ago, causing this widespread destruction. Dr. Kwelash Gimire says it saddens him to see what happened to his hometown, and he's encouraging others to help. Gimire says his sister, uncles, aunts, and friends lost their homes in the earthquake, but they are safe. He's been able to keep in touch with them through free telephone services and Skype. Gimire says he's proud of the international relief efforts, and he's partnered with more than 30 mathematicians from Nepal who now live in the States, raising money to help those affected by the natural disaster. And then it's pretty painful, like, you know, not to be there and, like, you know, uh, seeing our people being in that tragedy. And we are trying from our side, but, you know, you know, we cannot restructure everything back in place pretty soon. It might take generation to generation, but it is always better, like, you know, to put one brick on that restructuring process. The group has already raised close to $9,000. Guimere is also encouraging humanitarian organizations to use their talents to build homes in Nepal. You can find out how you can donate to Guimere's relief efforts at WALB.com. More details now on the Nepal quake. More than 7,500 people are confirmed dead, with another 14,500 injured. The United Nations says the disaster directly impacted 8 million of Nepal's 28 million people. Early estimates suggest it will take at least $2 billion to rebuild. One big concern is that so many children can't go to school due to badly damaged school buildings. Support is still pouring in for five nursing students killed in a crash. How classmates are helping their families. Plus, graduation is here for many students. Is it a good job market for them? And some vets are helping pet owners. How they made it easy for them to protect their animals from a deadly threat tonight.